The HS2 rail scheme to improve rail travel between London and the West Midlands will cost a fortune, £55 billion according to official figures, but far more according to many other estimates. And today, a report from the House of Lords says the costs do not appear to be under control. Well, uh, Lord Darling, uh, Alistair Darling, former, former Chancellor of the Exchequer, of course, is a member of the committee that produced that report. Good morning to you. Good morning. In what sense do they not appear to be under control? Well, we took evidence from the former uh, chairman of um, HS2 who said nobody knows what it's going to cost. And actually, if you look at big infrastructure projects, real projects, uh, they have a long history of not coming in at the price that was originally quoted because there are so many unknowns. And especially on a thing like this where it is being engineered to take to carry trains at a speed uh, far beyond anything else in the world. And that means you've got more expensive tunnels, more expensive track and so on. My my worry, our worry is that if the thing at the budget continue, is broken, then the second phase, which is actually the critically important bit, that's improving the railway lines in the north of England, either won't happen, it's not due to happen until the 2030s anyway, or it gets delayed because that's what the Treasury classically does. If things get out of control, it just puts the squeeze on it and then you don't get what you want. We say it's far better to look at this again, to look at uh, what we actually need, which is more... Uh, lines and better lines in the north rather than a fast link in the south uh, but also to look at whether or not you need to run at the line speeds they're proposing uh, and as well as uh, looking at other factors that might reduce the cost of this or at least keep the costs under control so we've got a chance of getting a railway that actually works. Mm, but it won't be HS2. Well, HS2, I mean, you know, there, there isn't a, a magic number that says it's high speed or not. This, this, these trains would be running at speed. But, you know, frankly, what, what, this, what Britain does not have are particularly good east-west links, and that's particularly acute in the Midlands and the north of England. Yeah, and you, but you know, for the last few... Okay, so I'll just finish this point. Mm. For the last few years, especially since the Brexit referendum, people have said, look, we need to do more to get economic regeneration outside the southeast of England. Improving the rail links in the, in the north of England is absolutely critical to that. Now, even now, it's not due to start till the 2030s. Uh, but if these costs carry on rising, then the risk is it gets squeezed out uh, so that people living in the north, the Midlands, are shortchanged as a result of uh, failure to control these costs or, uh, frankly, trying to do something that's very ambitious and not really necessary. Yeah, but the problem is we've already spent a fortune on it. Bought up a huge well, we amount of about... land and so on. That's right. But, you know, surely, you know, if anything, you know, as time goes on, and remember it's 10 years since this uh, thing, nine years since the thing, the thing the project was first floated, you, you know, any government needs to keep asking itself, is this actually going to do what we want and have the facts changed? Now, you know, for example, when the first this was conceived, it was conceived as high speed and speed was the big thing, but it was based on the idea that business travel travellers in particular don't work on trains. Uh, so therefore, if they get to where they're going more quickly, therefore the, the, you, you, there's a gain from that. In fact what it should be about is improving the capacity of our railways and that's particularly necessary I say in the north of England. Mm -hmm. And The other thing, I would just make the point, this point because it is terribly important if you're spending all this money on this project, all the time you've still got the rest of the railway network which will need money to be spent on it. So that's why cost control is absolutely critical and I've seen it in my time in government when these things get out of control you end up doing things you don't really want to do uh, because you didn't face up to the fact you were running into a problem at an early stage. Right, so but, but our argument is you need to rethink this. All right, but you're an old political hand and politically it's not doable. You, she can't now. I mean, the government, she may not be in control, of course, at the time, but the government can't just rethink it now, can they? Too late. Well, it, no, it's not. Um, you know, because... because you know, we, although you, you know, there's money's been spent acquiring property and so on, the actual engineering of this project, you know, the, the line speed you're designing tunnels for and so on, that is not fixed. And frankly, as far as the, you know, after this thing was conceived, that's when the Northern Powerhouse um, came on the scene and people recognised you have to do more money then. Those plans are not uh, so far advanced that you can't change them. So you can get a decent railway in the north of England as well as, you know, a high speed line as well. Right. So, yes, it can be changed, but, you know, it, it sometimes it's tough in politics, but you do have to sometimes accept it hasn't quite worked out the way we thought and perhaps you should do something better.